So we, uh, can you see my screen okay? Am I sharing? Yeah, I can see it. Okay. So your first question is how do you write answers in interval notation? All right. So if this is your question right here, the way you write interval notation um, is because of that equal to portion, you're going to write a bracket, a closed bracket, and then you write that number, negative one third, comma, one. And again, because of that, you write a closed bracket. If it wasn't, if it wasn't equal to, then you would do it just a parenthesis. Okay. And then to graph it, um, not that you asked, but just just to be clear, when you're graphing it, you would put um, negative one third here. You would fill in the circle, and that's because of the equal, because of that equal part there. You fill in the circle. And then one is over here, and also that's equal to. So you fill in the circle. If it didn't have that equal to portion, then you would just do a parenthesis, an open parenthesis. And then because it's between there, you're filling in between those two things. Okay. Now your other question is why does it flip? Okay. So um, for this one right here, eight minus square root of two, the absolute value. This literally means. When you have an absolute value, that means um, the distance between eight and negative or eight and the square root of two. That's what that means. So that's the distance between the two of them. So you can write that in two different ways. Um, so the square root of two is smaller than eight. So the distance is always positive. So when I say distance, I mean positive. Okay. So eight minus the square root of two, that's one way you could write this, or you could, um, I'm not actually sure what you're saying right here. Oh, well, you're saying if it was written this way, if it was written this way, then the answer would be eight minus the square root of two. That's because eight is bigger than the square root of two. See how there's no see how there's no uh, absolute value signs around this. Yeah. So you need to make sure it's a positive value. So there, whoever did this is writing this first. The bigger value is coming first. Okay. So, but literally, what an absolute value just means, like if I had written the absolute value of a minus b, that means the distance between a and b. And then yeah. by distance, again, I mean the positive distance between A and B. That's what that means. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, is, is this another question you're asking right here? Um, yeah, that was like a homework question that I didn't really understand. Okay, let me duplicate this. I'll write that on the next page. So this is saying the area A of a region is approximately that much. The area in the approximation is less than that much. Describe the possible values in this area and absolute value inequality. Okay, so you would say the error um, the distance between twelve point four. Two six and and x we call it x the error is um, is less than or equal to point zero zero one. And again, that's because this means when you write this, that means the distance between these two values. So it's like you're saying this. Here's twelve point. Four two six, and x can be either on the left side of it or on the right side of it, right? But the but the the, the difference between them. This is your difference between those two, right? Or to the right. That makes sense. And so they're saying it's less than or equal to point zero zero one. So another way you could write it is it's because 
describe the possible values of this area and absolute value inequality. So this would be your absolute value inequality, but if you wanted to write that as a um, uh, inter an interval notation, you would just actually add, you can actually solve this now, right? And so you would, it would be between 12.427 and 12.425. That would be if they said write it in an interval notation. That's how you would write. Does that make sense? Uh, no. No. Okay. Well, thank you. Um, so this is saying um, the area of a region is approximately this much, and I'm sorry, the area of a region is approximately that much. And the error in this approximation, because they're approximating, right? They're just saying it's roughly they're giving an estimate. They're saying the error is less than that, less than 0 0.001, which means if I add 0 0.001 to this, I would get 12.427, that number right there. And if I subtract 0 0.001 from this, I would get 12.425 right there. So, if I wanted to write it in terms of, they didn't ask me to do this, but if I wanted to write this in terms of an interval, interval notation, that's where the actual area would be somewhere between these two things, okay? But they didn't want me to do that. They said, describe the possible values of this area in, absolute, in an absolute value inequality. So they actually want me to write an absolute value inequality to demonstrate that you understand what what they're talking about here. So the way you would do that is <clears throat> you would take that number, 12.426, subtract X from it and put absolute values around it because that means the distance between 12.426 and X. That's what this thing means. The distance between 12.426 and X is less than or equal to 0 0.001. Still not making sense to you? Yeah. It is or isn't? Uh, no, it's making sense. Oh, okay. Because I could explain absolute value in another way if you'd like. Um, like if you... No, I think, I think for the most part, it's making sense. I just need to like be able to apply it. Right, right, exactly. So do you have some more questions? <laughs> I'm on page three. You want to either um, add a question or paste another yeah, question? Yeah, I... I can, um, yeah, I can write it out. Okay, go ahead and paste another one, or you can tell me I can write it out. I've got an Apple Pencil. A little bit easier for me, maybe. Um, I, can, I can do it. I just have to. Or actually, I can tell you it, because I can't really write in here. Yeah, go ahead. Um, it's like, um, like the absolute value uh, of 2x minus 3 equals 5x minus equals 5x minus 6? Yeah, like how would you, like I don't really understand, like we did this in class, but we kind of rushed through it and it it just like didn't really make sense. Okay. Am I, did I write it correctly? Um, yeah. And so there you're saying there's an x on both sides? Yes. And there's no absolute value sign over here. <clears throat> Correct. You glitched out. Oh, sorry. Is there's no there's no absolute value sign on the right. So I, I wrote this correctly. Yeah, you wrote it correctly. Okay. So here's how you would do this problem. The first step is always to isolate the absolute value expression, which we have done already. And at that point, what you want to do is you want to write this two different ways. <clears throat> if that means either that two x minus three is equal to positive five x minus six or 2x minus 3 is equal to negative 5x minus 6. Is this how your teacher did it? Yeah, but like, where did you get the negative 5x minus 6? So let me explain that to you with a simpler example just before we do this one. So let me give you an example. example. If I said that the absolute value of x was equal to 7, what would that mean x could be? 
Oh, positive seven or negative seven. Exactly. X, that means X is either positive seven or X is negative seven. That's exactly what I did right here. Yeah. Okay. It's just a, a little. It's a little bit harder to see when when you got all these variables, right? So that's what I'm doing. Yeah. And now and now I'm just going to solve each one of these equations. So to solve this equation, I'm going to subtract two x from both sides, and I'm going to add six to both sides, and then I'm going to divide both sides by three. Or for this one, I'm going <clears> to <throat> distribute. So negative five x plus six. Now I'm going to add. X. 5x to both sides, and I'm going to add 3 to both sides. So, x is now 7. so there's your answer. <clears throat> and then always you want to check your answer. Do you know how to check your answer with the graphing calculator? Yeah, we kind of went over it, but I didn't really understand that part either. <laughs> so let's check it by just plugging them in. Okay, so do you know the store button do you see in the can you see my screen okay or no? You see it? Yeah. Do you see the yeah. calculator? Do you see that yeah. the STO button? So we're yeah. gonna type in one and then we're gonna hit store and then we're gonna type in the variable x. So every time I type in x now, five x plus one, it's gonna plug or plus three, let's say it's gonna plug in one for x. Okay. So that was just an example. Okay. So yeah. now let's take the absolute value. This is in, I think, math. Number maybe? Yeah, absolute value of 2x minus 3. And I'm just going to hit enter. And now plug in 5x minus 6. And those should both be the same, right? Yeah. So that is not the same. Did I do something wrong? I solved this. Those are not the same answer, so I did something wrong. Um, well, on my on my notes, like um the the first one wasn't supposed to be like it. I think it wasn't supposed to work out, but the second one did. Or I don't I don't know. Okay, yeah. Let me let's think about why that's the case. It's a good thing we checked our answer. Because clearly one is not the, the correct answer. Oh, here's why. Th this is the other thing to think. You're checking, check for extraneous solutions. That's what this is. This is an extraneous solution. An extraneous solution is a solution that works out because your algebra, at some point when you did algebra, you, you didn't really make an error, but you introduced a possible wrong answer into the equation, which is what we did here. So this is yeah. an extraneous solution, and so we have to cross it out. Okay. Um, because what happened when we when we got rid of this? See, how when when we took took that off, we basically didn't account for the fact that negative one and positive one don't actually equal each other. Yeah. So that's called an extraneous solution. Now let's check with five or nine seven. So to nine sevenths and store it for x now so now x is the nine sevenths not not the other thing and then actually you can just hit second enter second enter second enter and it goes through and scrolls through what you've done and hit enter now it plugged it in now hit again second enter second enter second enter until you get to the five x minus six hit enter and it plugs it in and we can see that those two are the same Okay, that's just a little shortcut for checking your answer. Now you could also check it just by plugging it in, right? Plug nine sevenths into here and here and make sure that those two sides equal each other. But you always want to check for extraneous solutions when you're doing this. Make sense? Yeah. You have another one you want to do real quick? Um... I don't, I think that's like kind of all that really confused me in like my notes and my homework. So I don't, I don't really have anything else. Well, it sounds good. So you'll be able to watch this on my YouTube channel if you want to go and check it out. Let me end. Uh,